Good morning, everybody. This is John Blank, Zach's Chief Equity Strategist and Economist. And today I'm going to go through part two of a discussion we've been having, which is about Zach's top biotech and healthcare ETFs. We did the stocks in the part two or part one, and this is part two. So we always do go through the stocks first, the component parts first, and then we go through the ETFs. This is particularly compelling because picking biotech stocks for an ETF or healthcare stocks for an ETF is a more involved process and allows you to get some strategic advice free from people who are putting together these ETFs. Very helpful analysis today. So part one, we'll go through a review of biotech industry investment trends, which we presented in the first part, and we'll do that again in this context. So people can understand the basin in which we are selecting and the trends and investment criteria that are involved. Then we'll get into the actual analysis of the leading biotech stocks. We'll do this for a good chunk through part two, and then we'll finish up with the biotech and healthcare ETF valuations. So let's get going. First off, our disclosures. These are my views of John Blank, PhD, and they're not necessarily the views of Zach's investment research. The rest you can read us at your leisure. So let's get going. Part one, review of biotech industry investment trends. Like I said, we did this before, but it needs to be re re redone so we can understand it in terms of the ETF environment. All right, so let's get going. First of all, biotechnology has some definitions and it has a number of branches to know about. One in particular is bioinformatics. This is a scientific sub-discipline that involves using computer technology to collect, store, analyze, and disseminate data and information, particularly on DNA and amino acid sequences, or their annotations about those sequences. So this is kind of supercomputing stuff. Uh, keep that in mind that there is a lot of information that comes from biotechnology, and this really is enabled by the direction and strength of computing, and that's a lot of reason we're going to see this huge investment surge. So DNA technologies, these are the names of all of them, genomics, pharma, genomics, gene probes, DNA sequencing, genetic engineering. But keep in mind here, we've got lots of branches, DNA technologies, protein and molecular technologies, cell and tissue culture and engineering, process biotechnologies, subcellular organisms, and other areas. There you go with bioinformatics. And of course, the nanotechnology is even smaller. Lots of different language here to go through and understand. Over here, we've got the American Chemical Society's definition of it and the European Federation of Biotechnology definition. A couple other definitions based on here. These get you started in just terms of understanding. You've never come into the biotech space to go here. And then over here, you can see the, all the branches, all the branches, including this one from bioinformatics. All this came from the OECD. All right. So, what I want to point out here is capital raise and early stage venture investing. So what I want to point out here, first off, is that this is the, tr the trends for venture, which is green. And you can see venture investing got really rolling somewhere about 2015. Debt investment also got picked up in the early 2014-15 period. And what really followed in the follow-on, keep this in mind, follow-on investment second tier after it's been going investments that got picked up big big in the COVID period so this is what i want to point out right away follow-on investment after this earlier way to venture investment is where the market is globally now over here we've got both u.s and european early stage capital raised and the number of deals so you can see here the number of deals in capital raised was somewhere around three billion for many, many years until that 2015 period that doubled. Then it doubled again to 12, and then it actually peaked in 2021 at almost 17 billion. And you can see the number of deals went from around two or 300 to over 700. So they doubled. So there was an immense wave of stuff. So where does this all happen? Of course, here's the United States regions. Those are the top 10 regions, and here's the top 10 European regions. Massachusetts, Northern, Southern California, New York, New Jersey, and Texas, to some degree, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Florida, and Washington. So basically, the East and West Coast, where the population centers are, is a dominant area. Now, keep in mind here, we're doing this on a market 
number of public companies screen, but you can do this also on market capitalizations and revenue or R&D. All this is relevant. For example, notice over here, revenue in Germany is quite substantial, even though they have only 23 companies that have one that really worked. Revenue may be the better metric for biotechnology ideas because they're actually getting money from people who are buying the, the product, not the actual stock market, which is the market capitalization. So over in Europe, the big, big areas of Sweden, the United Kingdom, France, Israel, Germany, Switzerland, Denmark, and Norway, Ireland, and the Netherlands. So basically Northern European, you don't see Spain in there, you don't see Italy in there. The key is it's basically a Scandinavian, North European, the story in Europe, and it's a bi-coastal story in the United States. And like I said, most of this was started in the 2014-15 period, and now we're five years later, in a follow-on investment period. By the way, we're in 2023, we're out here. So this is what I'm thinking about. Capital raise in early stage venture banking is, is popped and bubbles are over, but maybe these projects are mature enough to be working well for you as an investor now. That's what we're talking about. All right, let's do some analysis of these biotech and healthcare ETFs. Number one, Here's the top 10 holdings of the top 10 biotech ETFs by asset under management. So this is IBB. That's the biggest one. Dicker IBB, and it's seven and a half billion. XBI is at six. Arc Genomics, you uh, this is Kathy Wood at two. FBT down at one, three, and then everything else, BBH, PBE, Genome, IDNA, SBIOA, all the way down here are much smaller, even below the hundred million. So you only get a couple really big ones to look at. And I want you to mainly focus on the wide variation share concentrations. Obviously, if you take an AB, IBB, which is the big one, you know, you're going to get big share concentrations in Amgen, Vertex, Regeneron. Those are the big names, and you're going to see them all over. Here's Amgen over here. Here's Amgen over there. And of course, Vertex is the big one in Boston. Here it is again down here. So Regeneron, you're going to see, is, is also a big name in this space. There it is over here again. So again, Amgen, Vertex, and Regeneron are going to be the top classic large cap names. But if you look beneath there, there's a lot of tickets. So XBI has a lot smaller portfolio share countries. And the largest one is 2% versus almost 9.5, 10 for this one. So this matters a lot for this industry. So when they're doing a lot of share picking, like SBIO, you're going to see a lot of these twos and threes. That's generally telling you that they're spreading their diversification up much broader than these more concentrated ones. It's going to make a difference to the returns and the risk you take as an investor. So keep this in mind. These share concentrations and the names within that really do matter, people. It's very, very different. You don't generally see this type of variation, but you do see it in biotech ETFs. All right. Same for the healthcare. Downstream of biotech, of course, is the healthcare groups. XLV is big. These are much bigger, by the way. That's 40 billion. That's 17 billion. That's 5.6 billion, 4 billion, 3 billion, 3 billion, 1.4 billion. And now you get below a billion. So generally, these are much larger in the healthcare space in terms of the amount of investment goes on here. And the names are also highly concentrated. Generally speaking, these are not, you can see other than this one, XHE. Uh, most of the time, there is this, again, fairly specific concentrations. Big names like United Healthcare, Eli Lilly, Johnson & Johnson, Merck, Thermo Fisher, Pfizer, Abbott, Danaher. We know these names. There's Thermo Fisher again, there's Abbott again, there's Johnson & Johnson again. So again, all these names are basically the same. Until so you get down here where there's the competitors in the ETF space who are offering you these other ideas, when they get the 2% holdings, that's when you're getting more risky and better positioned ideas from your medical technology perspective. For example, MedPace Holdings is one I put in the large cap trader. This is a very interesting one to know about because we've got the Zach's ranking backing it up. This one, we should look into this portfolio much more heavily. Same is true over here. And I would consider anything like this, like this is basically, um, you know, basically a large cap name, very safe name. Okay, management data points. 
Again, the issue here for all of you as investors is benchmarks, the expense ratios, the inception date, and the assets under management, particularly the benchmarks. I just want you to notice just how different and varied the benchmark indexes are in biotech. It can be the ICE biotech index for BlackRock or the S&P one for State Street. ARC does not have a benchmark. They just do their own active share selection. First Trust, where the name there, these guys do a very interesting job and they use the ARC of biotech on the New York Stock Exchange. But you can see the dynamic lab, or the selected by the S New York Stock Exchange FactSec Global. The names go on and on and on. I will also point out here, Direxian are going to be your leverage names and they do play off the S&P Biotech Index, which is basically XBI. So if you wanna do leverage, you're also gonna pay a double expense ratio here and there, you can see that. In general, IBB is, is a lower uh, expense ratio, but it's not the lowest. Uh, S&P has got them lower. Keep that in mind. ARC, of course, very expensive, started in that 2014 period. The main thing to understand about Kathy is she did get that early thing right um, in terms of the venture investing that started, like we said in the first stage, all the way back from that period. That's why she, she can give her some credit for that. Although other than that, we will get into the return that she's done very poorly. All right, broad healthcare. Again, look at all these different names. By the way, some of these are small cap names. Here's a small cap name. Keep this in mind. There's another small cap name, cap, S&P 500, cap healthcare index. These ones are actually much cheaper too. Across the board, the healthcare expense ratios are much, much lower. Uh, so when do these get going? You can see these are 98, 2004, 2001. Let's go back to biotech. And I just want to point out, these are much later in the 2014 to 2020 period. So that's like I said, with the investment wave, these are now the new wave. These are the old wave. And the in assets under management are much more mature and large, and the inception base are much older. They're also cheaper, cheaper. But again, interestingly enough, there is just no consistency with the benchmark indexes. You really do need to understand that and take your picks by looking into the benchmarks themselves. All right, returns analysis. I just want to point out first of all. There is Kathy Wood. So over 10 years, Kathy Wood's ARC Genomics Fund has returned basically 5% a year with a lot of variation. Standard deviation, very high here. You can see almost the highest in, in the top quartile of high. And so she's lost money in 2022-3. She made 20% here. She made a big return in 2016 to 2019, and then she lost money for a number of years here. So you got two losing year sequences and three winning year sequence, two winning year sequences. A lot of she wins as much as she loses. And of course, you're making a 5% return with a lot of variation, a lot of risk. Keep that in mind. IBB, is it is it one of the best? Yeah, actually it is. BBP down here is the best. Keep that in mind. And then that ticker BBP with a much lower variation than any other one up here. This is very interesting. Keep in mind BBP. IBP, BB does so pretty well along with XBI. So you really do not get much fair value out of anywhere out of the major ones. And keep that in mind. There has not been, and you can see here all the negative ones. There hasn't been a way to make money on these. More often than not, it's been a way to lose money over the last 10 years. Keep that in mind. All right, broad healthcare. Returns are much stronger here. Again, weighted to the bigger names. Keep that in mind. It, it seems to be the case that nobody, again, down here with all these little names, uh, is not making money. Um, interesting to note that. I've got a couple big names, RXL and Cure, who are really, really killing it. That's basically leveraged ETFs. I just want you to understand this, a two and three X ETFs. So it's not really comparable because they're just leveraging the returns for you. Here is more the typical classic pattern. So over 10 years, 20, 220 years, that's a 22% return, folks. That's really good. So you can go here and look at the biotech ETFs, or you can go here to the broad ETFs, and healthcare basically was a better decision for you as a returns analysis tells you. Keep that in mind. 
All right, recent changes. These are aggregating all of these healthcare and biotechs together. I just want to point out where the big managers are. They are State Street, Vanguard, BlackRock, Fidelity. ARC is number five. First Trust is pretty close to ARC, actually. And, you know, of late, they've actually had more assets under management than ARC. Keep that in mind. Invesco, also pretty much the same as Kathy Wood. But, of course, State Street, Vanguard, BlackRock, and Fidelity play a lot in that healthcare space. So they do manage to get a lot going. Not a lot of change over the last few weeks. That's not totally relevant. What's really relevant is the rank ordering of the managers here. Keep this in mind. Okay, so let's get into the valuation stories of these biotech and healthcare ETFs. Again, you can go back to the earlier slides and we're gonna, as we go through this stuff, you can go back to this slide and this slide for the names and the tickers, keep that in mind. I mean, you're particularly gonna need the slide deck here so that you can go through the valuation stories piece by piece by piece. This is critical. Remember the management data points I sent to you earlier in part two, they are gonna become quite important now in part three. Keep this in mind. All right, so for example, IBB and XBI are gonna be your classic PE ratios for the biotechs. And you can see they basically stick around 25 with this big hump up during the COVID period. You can see this also over here for the broad healthcare indexes. They also humped up during the COVID period. So since we're in a healthcare crisis, there was a lot of bidding on both biotechs and healthcare during the COVID period. And when the vaccination rates rose high enough and opening happened, they were really sold off. Keep that in mind. You can see that here. You can see that rolling over here. So there's also these really speculative ones. This is PBE. You can see how it moves around a lot and has a very high PE ratio. So if we go back to PBE, look for it, we're going to find it here. PBE is the Invesco Dynamic Biotech and Genome Intellidex Index. So Invesco is really playing momentum trading games for you and look what they achieve let's go all the way back there they achieve some momentum now for you really risky stuff p ratios in the hundreds folks it's really really risky stuff this is short-term stuff typically if you're really investing versus just as trading and this is investing you can see the differences here also the other one to point out here is this COVID period for the big health care names they all sold off folks right at the end of COVID. you can see that bubble same is true here, and then you see some names, or Ken, this is the PSCH, is a small cap index. That's also momentum trading. So there is underlying momentum trading in key select names that's going on now, and there's a subtle lift in the broad healthcare ETFs now. They've come off the bottom, and they're starting to rise. There's some interest in buying. Not so much the case with the PE ratios of the, the biotech companies. Interesting to note that, keep this in mind. Also, you can. See, again, you know, when you get these 45 P ratios in this healthcare stuff, the small cap name looking for momentum trading versus these larger cap names. Also in healthcare, you're looking at a 15 to 25 PE ratio versus 25 over here. But if you think the PE ratio is basically an annual return, annual growth rate, this is telling you that these guys can grow 25% of years and these are about 15 or so a year, which is a very different story. Um, is this true? Is this not true? I'll let you think about that. Price to book. Um, again, I just want to point out that from a price to book value perspective, all these are declining. Some of them quite dramatically. Here's FXH. Um, price to book now getting back to that 2018 area. So this gets attracted from a price to book rare. So FXH, you might want to put that on your list of things to look at. You've got an entry point here. From a price to book perspective, FXH, XH looks pretty attractive. Keep that in mind. Again, here's the COVID pandemic end, and now we're seeing a kind of conglomerate grouping of these names here, but not so much here. Very interesting stuff. All right, dividend investment for the smart beta biotechs. BBP. Fascinating name here. Keep this one in mind. Let's go back to BBP. And where do we see it? BBP will be, I can find it for you here, BBP. And I can find it 
there, BBP, Virtus Investment Partners, Life Science Biotech Products Index. The Virtus, this is a great name to know about, BBP. What do we see here? We've got only 15, 16 million, but these people are hiring medical doctors and biotech experts. That's the Virtus Investment Partners. The pick better names for you. And it actually looks like it's working pretty well. But keep that in mind. I mean, that's what I like about this type of work. You can say a BBP here from a share returns perspective. Um, still better to be in the healthcare names, broadly speaking. But over here, if you're looking for a name that's recovered, BBP might be the place. And within that, if you have some knowledge about biotech, you can play it well. So very interesting stuff for you to use. The slides are critical today. I kind of keep that in mind. You really need the slides to go through these charts, valuations, and the stories of their management. This is critical. So with that in mind, thank you for attending. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly learned enough a lot today myself putting this together and trying to get through this information. In particular, I didn't really understand as much as I do now the COVID healthcare scare and what it did to valuations and investment in this business. And now we're two years out and it's starting to get in a mature phase. That's my main thesis for my learning today. And if you want the slides, please call us at 866-794-6065 or send us an email at strategycall.zaxpro.com. On the web, www.zaxpro.com. In LinkedIn, we're at Zach's Professional Services, and on Twitter, it's at ZA Tools. I certainly hope you enjoyed this. Once again, I want to give you these numbers, 866-794-6065. You've got to get these slides or send us an email, strategycall at zachpro.com. Thanks much.